penetrate red eye surface defenses. Target power stone is in the central energy chamber. Hey everybody, welcome back to VDMS. So, Tiger Nugger Ding series unported playlist where I take those my favorite unported arcade games of all time. And today we're playing Starblade, released in 1992 by Namco on the Polygonizer hardware, also known as System 21. And before you go down below and leave me a comment saying this was ported to Sega CD and PlayStation 1, I am well aware the Sega CD version is vastly inferior, and the PlayStation 1 version texture mapping the polygons takes all the charm away from the game. And honestly, there's no real rules here, so we can put it out unported if we want to. This game is just absolutely spectacular from start to finish. The flat shaded polygons, the overall space vibe, the camera movements, the combat, this is the total package and it predates the Sega Model 1 hardware by about 8 to 9 months in arcades as far as 3D hardware was concerned. While the Polygon Eyes or System 21 wouldn't really keep up power-wise with the Sega Model 1, if you saw this thing in arcades in 1992, your mind would be absolutely blown away by the level of 3D fidelity and graphics on display here. The best part is because 3D was so new, not every single developer knew how to make games for it correctly, but Namco absolutely hit a grand slam when it comes to this game. It is fun, it's action-packed, it's fast-paced, and it kind of feels like a Star Wars arcade game without the actual franchise attached to it. There really isn't anything that Starblade does that I don't absolutely love, and as you see here as these models come closer to the camera, sure they're not made out of many polygons, but that flat shaded look absolutely stands the test of time so much better than texture mapping. In the early days of 3D, especially in arcades, I feel like the less they tried to actually use textures, the better the games age. Still something like Virtual Racing on the Sega Model 1 hardware looks spectacular today, and it's all down to that art style. And while there might not be many polygons on display here, absolutely every single model is instantaneously recognizable as some sort of spaceship or another, and this right here definitely still gives me some big Star Wars vibes. This cabinet was huge when it released. It had a concave screen, so it would basically look like it was larger than it actually was, giving you this full immersion setup. Obviously, if you emulate that, you'll lose a little bit of it, but otherwise, this game runs perfectly via MAME, and it's such an experience. And again, because this did come over to the PlayStation 1, there is other ways to play it, but honestly, with the texture mapping on that version, it just takes away all the visual flair and charm and ages the game way too much. I'd 10 out of 10 times rather play the arcade original of Starblade than I would play the PlayStation 1 version, and honestly, the Sega CD is vastly inferior to what you see here. And when this first came out in arcades, it was just absolutely mind-blowing that this was even possible. You will see that it's basically an on-rail shooter, but you can articulate the camera left, right, up, and down ever so slightly with the analog flight stick you're using here. I'm just using an analog Xbox Series X controller, which works perfectly fine, but you can totally hook up a flight stick if you want to as well. And if you like space combat games and have never played this game before, it has absolutely so much to offer you. It's fun, it's fast paced, it's action packed, and you get to see what the early days of 3D looked like because so many of the models here are so stylized, you're not quite sure what you're looking at, but you love to look at them. Like these squares here, I'm sure it was a design constraint based upon how many polygons could be on screen. And obviously this mechanized planet Red Eye, if that's not just the Death Star, I have absolutely no idea what it would be. This is wearing its Star Wars inspiration on its sleeve, so much so that I'm slightly surprised there was not some sort of issue with the Lucasfilm back in 1991 when this came out in some sort of IP lawsuit, but it didn't happen, and I am glad for that. Now this right here definitely gives me a lot of Atari Jaguar vibes with Cybermorph. You're not going to hear where did you learn to fly, but this does look like an Atari Jaguar game, and I mean that as a compliment because obviously this is much earlier than the Jaguar, but this has always given me those big Cybermorph feels, except that an actual good game versus Cybermorph, which is iffy at best, but you can leave me a comment down below if you disagree. The only thing that this game doesn't really do very often is display any sort of soundtrack. You have sound effects and there's a little music in the beginning and end, but otherwise it's just mostly a soundscape. Go ahead and listen. Some of the dialogue and voiceover is fun, and I'll be right back. Oh. 
I love the sound effects, I love the overall soundscape, but this game commits my number one cardinal sin, and it was very popular back in the day. The low health siren. I will take deaths in the long play of this game just to stop listening to it. I absolutely hate that, but pretty much every game did it in the early 90s, but it is still one of my pet peeves. It absolutely annoys the ever-loving hell out of you, and it never lets up. Now, as we go on this little bit of a canyon run here, I just love how this looks. All of the flat shaded polygons, they almost seem cell shaded in a way, but obviously they aren't. The little bit of different color tones to them really do give you the sense of overall depth. And as we fly back into the stratosphere here, this just 100% works. It's got such a unique charm. And we come down into this city here, again, some Atari Jaguar vibes. I'm getting some Iron Soldier, except we don't have any of the texture mapping, obviously. But what this game really does and does well is the camera movements. They're slow, they're sweeping, they have plenty of frames of animation in them. The engine is holding up. It really does feel like you're in an epic space battle because that's what they were going for here. 3D space battle in the universe and it just works. As the camera spins around, you really do get that sensation of being in a full cockpit trying to actually navigate this area. It works every single time I play this game and it is shocking just how much fun it still is. Because this was the era of developers just learning how to use 3D in arcade games or even home console games. So they spent a lot of time just basically on the technical aspects of it. More so than when they would get comfortable with 3D later on. So the fact that they had enough time and enough wherewithal to be able to produce an absolutely fun 3D arcade game that still holds up today is a testament to just how good they truly were at this. And as we come in here to this power source with all these crystals floating around, the vibes here are just incredible. I love the colorways they chose, those light pastel pinks that are kind of purpley in hue, the blues, everything just goes together to create a product and a game that is still as good looking today in 2024 as it ever was in 1991. And I love these little cutaways as well, giving you a sense of what you're going to be doing next to give you a little bit of detail and just a little bit of that wireframe animation there of the next stage you're going to go to and of course we get one more epic space battle here hitting some of the ships in the distance can be slightly difficult but you get better at it and this game takes about 22 minutes from start to finish it is the type of thing that you can play more than once but again with those star wars vibes we're going to drop down in here and have a full trench run obviously we're not going to be firing any missiles into any hatches but otherwise again this is just star wars without the license i think this is actually better than what sega did with the star wars franchise on the model one arcade board and i know that's a very popular game i love it as well but for me starblade definitely did a better job and it did it earlier but leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think the only thing about this game is that it is slightly hard when you learn it but the good thing is you're not putting actual quarters into the machine so it doesn't really matter and i have not seen an arcade board for this thing probably since the mid 90s if you know where there is one leave me a comment down below i would be curious these things were massive it was the first generation of the hardware and the hardware on the polygonizer or system 21 changed three different times in its life so even if you find a system 21 board it might not be the board that runs something like starblade but i am definitely trying to hunt down a board for this game i'd love to have it in my collection so i can play on real hardware but big kudos to the MAME developers for getting this running. If this is doing anything that real hardware isn't, you'd have absolutely no idea whatsoever. And that's why MAME is such a great project. It provides us the ability to still play a game that's exceedingly rare, if not extinct, out in actual arcade floors. And this was just such a special time in arcade game development. I remember growing up, I was maybe like 6 or 7 at the end of the 80s, and 2D was everything and everywhere. But when I first set foot into my local arcade and saw a 3D arcade game, it was amazing to see the transition and if you didn't live through that it'll be a little bit harder to understand but seeing something like this back in 1991 1992 felt like nothing short of magic it absolutely blew your mind that this was even possible because kids probably even adults didn't even register that 3d was something that could be done in video games we probably all just assumed that we'd be playing sprite based games till the end of time because 3d basically seemed like magic in motion and as we get out of that final Death Star battle there, you get one last battle against the commander. Once you defeat him, the game is over. 
So again, it's a 22 minute game. It's action packed. It doesn't pull any punches and it still absolutely holds up visually. If you've never played Starblade before, definitely check this out. If you've only ever played the PlayStation 1 version, I can't recommend this enough. It is the better version and honestly, I'm only ever going to play the arcade version of Starblade. While the PlayStation 1 version is as much fun, it just does not look in any way, shape or form anywhere near as pretty as this game does. But that is Starblade. It's a 10 out of 10. It's a piece of arcade gaming history, and it is a game I absolutely love. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.